Life is hectic. Some days are just a blur. We're Jay and Laura LaFoon, and we help busy couples stay married for life. Welcome to the Married for Life podcast. So we're talking about Christmas traditions. And um, as I've said, uh, this is the one month of the year where Jay and Laura flip-flop. For 11 months of the year, Jay's kind of the cheesy, corny... And Laura's more of the snarky, sarcastic. She's like using that word I snarky. Don't like snarky. I don't mind sarcastic. <laughs> snarky. But when it comes to the month of December, Laura turns into this big cheese ball, and I turn into the snarky. It actually starts Thanksgiving. Yes, Thanksgiving. She turns into a cheese ball, and uh, just is just like, oh my goodness, we have to listen to the radio station that plays only Christmas music and uh, 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 all this stuff. So I'm gonna give her. I'm gonna give her props. I've learned because I've learned this, and this is a great lesson to learn in marriage. If it's important to your spouse, it should be important to you. And Christmas is important to my wife, and so I'm I'm I do my best to make it important to me. But I wanna I'm going to give the floor to Laura. So wait, wait. I'm gonna give the floor to Laura and have you tell us why this is your most favorite time of the year. So why isn't it the most favorite time of the year for you? It's Jesus' birth. Shouldn't we all be excited about Easter's that? Easter's more important to me. <laughs> Oh, way to <laughs> slam me spiritually. I see what you're doing. I do love from Thanksgiving till the new year. And, you know, I I don't know that we had a lot of traditions when I was growing up, you know, that we that that made me love this time of the year. I, I can tell you one reason I love this time of the year, and I know this is going to sound whatever, but Dr. Gary Chapman's book, The Five Languages of Love, one of my love languages is gifts. And so I have a birthday in December and I have birthdays to give gifts in December and then we have Christmas. So it speaks well, my love language. Oh, wait, there's another sure. important date in December. Oh, our anniversary. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know. Right. <laughs> I said I have I have things to give gifts uh. for, and I, but I just love this time of year. Just the, the lights, the holidays, the family time. Um, it's Christmas has just always been my favorite time of the year. And maybe it's because I was born in the month of December. Um, maybe it's because of Jesus, even though you just slammed me and said Easter should be more important. But you wouldn't have Easter without no, Christmas. Christmas. Oh. So there. Like I said, see, <laughs> I'm sure somebody cheesy. has said that somewhere along the line. I haven't said that myself. But I do love this time of the year. We do have birthdays. We have anniversaries. And then we have Christmas, and I just love the transformation that happens in our home. I am a big decorator. We uh, One of our traditions, since we're talking about Christmas traditions today, is we don't do Black Friday shopping. We decorate for Christmas. And when our kids were in the house, it was a big a big deal to stay in our pajamas. We would have something fun for um, breakfast on, on the morning cinnamon after rolls. Thanksgiving. Yes, usually those Pillsbury cinnamon rolls that are so bad for you, but they're so good. <laughs> We'd turn on the Christmas music and we would decorate the, the house for Christmas. And that just was a tradition we started early on, but it's um, I do remember decorating for Christmas as a child. I don't remember if it was the day after Thanksgiving or not. but And we'll make a couple of recommendations as to Christmas albums that we like to listen to. We love Hanson Snowed In. Hanson Snowed In. Chicago. Chicago, This Is Christmas. Um, and then I, one of my favorites is my good friend Peter Ide. He's an independent mu- musician. Um, but uh, hopefully we can get, uh, get your links to those in the show notes. Yeah, we'll put those links in the show notes. And if you're a Sirius XM fan, there's a Holly, a Holly channel, I know, on Sirius XM. So Jay's just laughing at me because I do. I have in one car we have Sirius XM, so I have it on the Holly channel. And in the other car we don't have Sirius XM, so it's on the local channel that plays Christmas music all month long. Yes. He's now, dying. He's dying right now. Now, for Laura and, and, and for me, uh huh, and for me too, uh, Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year, but. But I've just, I'm going to be as honest as I can. Uh, this Christmas is going to suck. Mm-hmm. We lost my dad this year um, unexpectedly. He was happy and healthy and fit. And um, my doggone son and his wife moved to Houston, Texas. <laughs> and our daughter Grace no longer lives at home. And so uh, all those happy memories of uh, Christmas has gone by are going to have to sustain us as. It's me and Laura and my mom and my sister. <laughs> and your aunt. Oh, and my aunt, aunt's yes. Coming. <laughs> Jay, I can't Jay and say, all the girls. Yeah, I can't, Jay say, and all I the can't girls. say what we call it around the LaFoon household <laughs> uh, in a public forum, but uh, it's me and all the girls. You we'll, can let your We'll mind talk wander. about that in a little bit as we talk about new, uh, but yeah, Christmas For some traditions. of us, here, here's, some, here's some reality. For some of us, Christmas is not fun. Uh, you've got bad memories at Christmas. Maybe you don't have good family memories at Christmas. Here's another thing. Um, 
we know that that mental health is a challenge for many people. Maintaining your mental health and the stress of Christmas oftentimes makes that worse. And so we uh, uh, we realize that it's yes, we're celebrating the birth of Jesus, and it is a wonderful time of year. But uh, you know, be sensitive to those who maybe have gone through some change, like we have and or those that uh, this isn't the most wonderful time of year for them. And we will talk about some of that in the later in the show as we talk about Christmas traditions, new and old. So we, we will hit on that here in a little bit. But before we do that, we want to answer a question from a listener we that we these. have. Yes. So if you have questions you'd like for us to answer, please send those to podcast at jandlaura.com. We would love to answer your questions. And this question is from a listener. The biggest struggle in our marriage, from my viewpoint, is that we are at different places spiritually. I have fully submitted to the Lord and desire to find his will for my life. My husband is insistent in living for his flesh. This creates many barriers and frustrations. Sharing, encouraging, and witnessing is taken as preaching or what I'm or that I'm telling him what to do. If I go along with him, I'm uncomfortable in worldly situations and environments. The thing he the things he wants are the opposite of the things I study in the Bible. Ah! <laughs> this is a very difficult situation. It's a very difficult marriage, especially when one is a firm believer and one is not. And this is where the Bible talks about, you know, you can be unequally yoked. And um, this probably, probably you, it sounds like this couple went into marriage, maybe neither being a believer. And now that the wife has become a believer, it's very hard for the husband who has lived this life outside of spiritual things now having to deal with a wife who's very turned on for for Jesus and that makes for a very difficult situation for sure so Um, I think a couple things come to my mind as I think about it is first of all as the believer um, we have to give grace Um, we have to give grace anyway but in this particular situation understanding that your husband doesn't believe the way that you believe and giving him grace is going to pay off in the end as far as loving him in spite of himself, so to speak, um, and showing him the love of Jesus, maybe not through words, but through actions. Actions speak louder than words. Well, and I'm, I'm just going to take one sentence out of here in, in to see the different perspective that your husband, your husband has. You said sharing, encouraging, and witnessing is taken as preaching. Well, if that's how it's taken, then that's what it is. And so my encouragement to you would be to stop doing that. Um, Jesus came to do two things, to serve and to love. You do those two things, he cannot deny what you're doing. If you serve him, your, your husband, and if you love him, your husband. You do those two things, he cannot deny those two things. He can say you're preaching at me when you're encouraging him or sharing a scripture with him. But when you serve him and you love him, he can't call that anything other than serving and loving. And that's how you will speak the life of Jesus into the life of your of your husband. And I do think so often as believers, we feel like we have to tell people what they're doing wrong because we want to make sure that they know what's right. And, and really what we have to do is serve them and love them, give them grace, understanding their perspective and understanding, you know, and going from that. I know, you know, we want to say, oh, but his perspective is wrong or he's wrong. Well, yeah, you already know that. But doing what Jesus commanded us to do as far as loving and serving people so that they can see, they will know we are Christians by our love. That's a new that command is, I give to you. Yeah, love one another. And so I know this is really hard, um, but you have to do that for the sake of your marriage. We're talking today about Christmas traditions. And you know, Christmas, tra- tra- for me, I have a hard time saying that word. Christmas traditions, it's those two words together, are really important because Christmas traditions create memories. Um, I know for our, my, our kids will remember that we decorate the day after Thanksgiving, that we did all the, the cookies and the, the music and the decoration, and we put the outside lights up. And then we had a couple of different other traditions that we did throughout 
the Christmas season. We always drive around after Christmas Eve service and look at lights around around town. And we know where all the good lights are here in our small little town. But it creates those memories that then your children can take and build off of with their own kids and creating those memories. So memories are important to me. It's what sustains us when people aren't around anymore. (laughs) So you want to remember those times. Well, I remember (laughs) one of my favorite Christmas uh, memories, and it was from when I was a little boy. I mean, we're talking. You remember that far back? I do. It was like I was, I think I was maybe seven or eight, and I had begged and begged and begged for this indoor baseball game. Mm -hmm. It was because we live in Michigan and I wanted to play baseball in the middle of winter. And I begged and begged and begged, went to sleep on Christmas Eve, hoping. And at about 11 o'clock on Christmas Eve, I was woken up because the adults were making so much noise. Well, my dad and his friend were playing the game, <laughs> and so I knew that I got the I knew that I got that uh, because uh, I saw them playing it. But that, I, I'll I'll never forget that. But uh, we hope we've created a lot of great memories for our kids over the years. I know my parents always had their friends over for Christmas Christmas parties. They had Christmas parties, and that was one of the memories I remember laying in my in the in the my bedroom door looked right into the family room and I would just lay right in my bedroom door and look at all the adults out there having a good time at Christmas. So that was always, always fun too. But yes, Christmas traditions are important because of the memories. I think too, the other thing that it does, why it's important is it gives you an opportunity to kind of cement your belief system in your kids. Um, We're staunch Christ followers, staunch, no, we're Christ followers, period. Um, And, and uh, you know, the birth of Christ the advent of of, uh, of Jesus is so important. And um, one of our traditions that we do as a family or did as a family was we talk about the Christmas tree and the uh, spiritual significance of the Christmas tree. Um, I know a lot of people think, oh, it's pagan, it's pagan. Well, you know what? As Paul said, you can take what Satan meant for evil and turn it into good. And we did that with a Christmas tree. And uh, the Christmas tree is an evergreen. And that right, we would teach our kids. We would get some hot cocoa on Christmas Eve after we'd gone to church and drove around and get some hot cocoa and put our fake fire on the fireplace and the <laughs> TV. And, and we talk about what, what the tree means and the fact, oh, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> The, Who's not cheesy this holiday right. season? <laughs> you know, the fact that the evergreen tree um, represents everlasting life that we get with Jesus. And all the uh, all the lights represent the angels mm-hmm. that sang glory to God. And the, the star on top represents the um, star that led the wise men. And then obviously the ornaments represent the gifts that they brought. And so for us, that's a, that's a tradition that cemented the belief that we have in, in who Jesus is and what he came for. Yes. Yeah, so and Christmas traditions are important because of the memories. It cements your beliefs, but it's also a bonding time. And, you know, as we've talked about, <laughs> Christmas traditions can change. That's supposed to be the happiest time of the year to listen to us. Um, but it, it, it creates, you know, I can remember I was just telling our daughter this over Thanksgiving when I was making those donuts that I've talked about in a previous podcast. Um, And we had flour all over the kitchen this Thanksgiving morning. And I remembered another time that we had flour all over the Christmas, all over the counter was when she was probably four or five. I bet she wasn't even that old. And we were making cookies. That was another one of our Christmas traditions was to make sugar cookies. And I had just sat her right up on the counter because she was getting into all the flour and the cookie dough and just made this huge mess. And that was a time that she and I both remembered that was really fun. And so credit. Christmas traditions are great for bonding, but we also know that Christmas traditions are going to change. And so you need to always be making new traditions and new things that, you know, as Jay has shared in past podcasts, this is going to be a hard time of year for us this year, but we're making, that's that's why we made the donuts at Thanksgiving was to make new traditions. We've bought some new games. We've been given some new games to play this Christmas um, since there's only Jay and the women. <laughs> He's not excited about it, but games that we can play that'll make new traditions and new things we can do to continue to make those memories, to cement our beliefs, and to continue to bond us as a family. Hi, everyone. This is Paul Thomas, director of live events here at Celebrate Ministries. Christmas is next week. It's right around the corner. And if you're the last minute shopping type, we want to make you aware of some gift ideas that we have for you and your spouse that you can still get under the Christmas tree. Now, we've got several events in 2019 that would make great gifts. 
like our Celebrate Your Marriage conferences at Grand Hotel on Mackinac Island in May or October, and our marriage cruise in either January or July. Now, we've got a great conference at Grand Hotel to celebrate the special relationship between mothers and daughters, and that takes place in June. If you want to find out more about these events, if you want to buy tickets and get them under your tree, please check out our show notes or visit jayandlaura.com. Now, Jay and Laura have been talking about compassion in this month's podcasts, and we want to encourage you to consider sponsoring a child through compassion this Christmas. Now, we sponsor Compassion Children as a family, and it makes a great experience that your entire family or you as a couple can enjoy as you build a relationship with your sponsored child. As a reminder, for the month of December, if you visit Compassion.com slash Jay and Laura, and if you sponsor a child, as our way of thanking you, we'll send you a copy of Laura's book, It's All About the Shoes. Sponsoring Children from Compassion has been a blessing to all of us on the Celebrate Ministries staff, and we know it will be a blessing to you as you help release children from poverty in Jesus' name as a couple or as a family. Now, you can find out more about Compassion. You can find out more about the process of sponsoring a child by checking out the link that's in our show notes. Jay and Laura are going to be back on the road this winter as the ultimate date night He Said, She Said tour kicks off, and you can get tickets or find out their schedule by visiting jayandlaura.com. Finally, we want to thank you for listening to this podcast, and we hope that you've enjoyed it. We hope you enjoy all the resources that Jay and Laura provide. Here at Celebrate Ministries, we are all about helping people create Christ-centered relationships that are filled with fun and significance and growth that last a lifetime. Now, if you're interested in joining us to help couples in their marriages, would you consider making a donation to Celebrate Ministries this holiday season? You can visit jayandlaura.com for more information. Now, let's get back to Jay and Laura. We're talking about Christmas traditions, and one of our favorite traditions each each Christmas, obviously, is giving gifts. We love to give gifts. Laura is, her love language is gifts, and so that is definitely one of our biggies. And um, we're taking an opportunity here in December to challenge our listeners to give the gift of hope this year. As a family with your kids, to give the gift of hope to a child in a third world country. We're going to be spending, I'm not trying to lay a guilt trip, this is just the facts. We're spending hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars on gifts to those we love. How about sending love to someone we don't know? in the form of a sponsorship of a child with compassion. When you sponsor a child with compassion, you give the gift of hope. This is a child who doesn't have enough to eat, doesn't have enough clothes to wear, has no education and no future. But when you sponsor that child with compassion, you give them all of those things and more. You give them food, clothing, education, medication, but most importantly, the hope of life ever after with Jesus Christ. Yes, so we would love to ask you to look into sponsoring a child with compassion, and you can do that by going to compassion.com backslash Jay and Laura, and check out everything there is to do there. We would highly recommend that you do this as a family. You can go right on there. You can look at children, the countries that they're from, the ages that they are, the hobbies that they have, and really what better gift to give this Christmas than to give hope to a child in a third world country. Remember, that's compassion.com backslash Jay and Laura. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well, how do we go about creating Christmas yes, traditions? Yes, you may be saying, Jane, Laura, you guys have talked about Christmas traditions. You've shared some of yours. But how did you just come up with these Christmas traditions? We, you know, did it just evolve we, or did you? No, we consulted the tradition fairy. <laughs> Well, the the tradition of us decorating the day after was, Christmas, was the me, day after Thanksgiving, was Jay. Let's just get this over with. No, no, no it was me trying to keep Laura from going to Black Friday, Black Friday sales. sales. But we started that before we had children. That was just something. Um, actually, we were in youth ministry, and we didn't have the first Christmas. Was that our first Christmas together? I think it was. No, our first, it was our second. Because our first Christmas was our honeymoon. That's true. Oh, that's true. Yeah, we didn't have a Christmas tree then either. But we had lots of trees out in Colorado. But uh, our second. Christmas together we were in youth ministry we didn't have money to buy a tree or anything and our campus life kids brought us trees and a tree <laughs> yeah not, not trees. we, didn't have we had 85 one. trees that first no brought us just trees one tree and, and, and ornaments. some ornaments and we kind of decided right then that that was going to be a tradition that we would always decorate the day after thanksgiving now one of the things seriously if, if you're saying well geez i don't know oh, traditions christmas i am not very much in the holiday but i want to do this for my kid uh, or kids, I would seriously go Google um, most popular Christmas traditions and see what comes up. We've never done that, but that might be fun. 
for us to create some new traditions this year, well, which we I've, need to do. Yes, and I've seen quite a few on Facebook that I wish that I had, that, you know, people share all their fun stuff on Facebook, and they share lots of stuff on Facebook, but one that I've seen from some moms on Facebook is uh, wrapping up a Christmas book for your child for every day of the month of December. So there's already gifts underneath the tree, and the kids get to open one every day of December, and it's a new Christmas book. It's going to promote them reading, obviously. Um, there's gifts underneath there. What a fun thing. This elf on the shelf thing, I don't understand. In, but I know that's a Christmas tradition that a lot of people with young children are doing. So, and the Christmas tree cutting down thing is huge right now, making a whole day out of going to a Christmas tree farm and cutting down and having hot chocolate and stuff like that. So those are just some things that we've seen on social media that you can that check you can out. Do. And I just Googled that. Why wouldn't we just go ahead and Google, you know, Christmas traditions, new Christmas traditions. And honey, I found a really good one. It's called Naked Gift Wrapping. Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> no, I don't think so. So, Come on. creating Wouldn't Christmas traditions. No, it would yes, not. It would. Mm-hmm. So, great. no. No. Ooh, paper okay. cut. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Obviously, we don't have children in the house. So, how to create Christmas traditions, you know. Check out what other people are doing. That would be one thing I would say. Ask your kids, what are some things that you guys want to do? I can remember, again, growing up, um, with our kids growing up, we had a family in the neighborhood. We always would go over to their house, the kids and the moms, and we would do sugar cookies and decorating. And we bought the sugar cookies already made from Gordon Foods. And you can buy the the Frosting. frosting already made and put it in different bowls and color all the different stuff. And it was just fun. It was something that we did. It was something our kids wanted to do. And so we all did that. So ask your kids What is something that you guys would like to do for Christmas and make that a tradition? Again, you're going to build those memories. You're going to have that bonding time, and you're going to cement those beliefs. And if you're like us, you probably need to write it down. So you don't forget. Right, because we, (laughs) oh my goodness, if we don't write it down, we forget it. We have funny, you know, hey, honey, remember that funny thing you said? What was that again? I don't remember. That was yesterday. I actually went out and bought little bitty cardboard covered books. They're really tiny, but we have them in every room of our house for all different kinds of stuff so we don't forget. So stuff. write down those traditions and especially write down what was the what was the kids' reactions mm-hmm. to them. Did they really enjoy them? Is it something we should do again? And and then finally We this... would encourage you, highly encourage you to not negate these traditions every year. Even right. as your kids grow up. I yeah. I would <laughs> go as far as to say boldly repeat those because you know you're going to around what 12 13 years old you're going to start getting eye rolls and oh my goodness do we have to do this again that's such a baby thing to do. No. This is a family thing to do. And it's funny because our kids were seven years apart. And so we got this from our son, who's seven years older than our daughter, Grace. And Tori was like, this is so stupid. But, you know, about halfway through his first hot chocolate, and <laughs> about halfway through the second Christmas song, he's starting to get into it and really realizes And then that- as he got college age and, the, and, and our daughter was in junior high, she thought it was stupid. And Tori was like, no, we are doing this. So remember, your kids are going to grow up. They're going to change. But boldly adhere to those traditions and repeating them year after year will, of course, continue to make those memories. It will adhere to the belief system that you have, and it will help you bond as a family. Well, thanks for joining us, and we really hope that you will have a Merry Christmas. And um, we really appreciate the fact that you listen to our podcast. We would ask that you would rate our podcast on the different platforms, and then also share it with your friends. We really are in this to help as many people as we can, so share the podcast with your friends so that we can help them too. We are Jay and Laura LaFoon, and we are here to help busy couples stay happily married for life.